Hello and welcome to the first video in my AI prompt series. Whether you're a seasoned prompter or just getting started, my goals with these videos is to give you prompt inspiration and perhaps introduce you to some styles that you haven't heard of. My favorite use of Midjourney or any AI image generator is the exploration of visual aesthetics, finding just the right interesting combination of words and styles that opens up a rabbit hole that I can get lost in for hours. In this video, we'll go through 10 film and photographic styles. I used Midjourney V6 to create the images that you're about to see, but feel free to experiment with any text image tool that you prefer. For each style, I'll show six different subjects. I tried to pick diverse subjects so that you get a better idea of how different styles affect a range of subjects. For simplicity, each prompt will follow the formula subject comma style. Then we have our parameters, V6 for Midjourney model version six, an aspect ratio of two to three, and I'll use the same seed number of 1111 in every prompt. Now don't worry if you don't know anything about seed numbers, you don't have to include a seed number. I'm doing it for this video because it establishes a degree of reproducibility and allows us to more easily compare the impact of different prompts on the same subjects. If you wanna know more about using seed numbers and prompts, I wrote an article that I'll include in the description below. Make sure you give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll get started with our first style. Our first style is photogram color. A photogram is a cameraless image made by placing objects directly onto light sensitive material Material, like photographic paper and then exposing them to light. This results in a negative shadow image with varying tones based on object transparency. I really like the mixture of silhouette and double exposure effect that this produces. And because I've included the word color in the prompt, we also get vibrant colors. If you want more monotone images, just remove the word color from the prompt. It's interesting that summer festival is more dominated by plants. Natural objects, especially plants are common subjects in photograms. And since summer festival is kind of a vague subject, I suspect Midjourney is leaning more heavily on the photogram technique here, and that's why we're getting more plants. This happens with the Forgotten Realm image grid as well, another vague subject. On the left, Midjourney was able to make a cat, but it's not anthropomorphic, and only one of the four images truly displays the photogram style. This doesn't mean that we can't get an anthropomorphic cat with a photogram style, but it would take some more prompt crafting. Some of the ghost images almost look like film negatives, which is a nice effect. Photogram is a unique style, but it might produce unpredictable results that need more prompt tweaking, depending on the subject. 35 millimeter color film is a classic camera film that was widely used for photography and motion pictures. The color palette is visually appealing and works well for many genres of photography, including portraits and landscapes. These images have some really nice, rich warm tones and a nostalgic cinematic feel. Summer Festival looks like a summer festival now. We also got a few nice anthropomorphic cats out on an adventure. The Forgotten Realm images look like overgrown stone ruins, and it struggled with having a ghost drink coffee and opted for a person surrounded by steam and smoke. However, if I restructure the prompt and ask for a ghost drinking coffee, the image was taken on 35 millimeter color film. The images that I get are in the same style, but now we have a ghost. Midjourney V6 actually prefers the full use of grammar. So if a simple subject comma style prompts like these aren't working well for you, just try putting them into sentences. Next up, we have chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration occurs when a lens fails to focus all of the light wavelengths to the same point. This results in unnatural colors often visible along high contrast edges, such as a sunset landscape horizon. Now, as a photographer, I despise chromatic aberration in my images, but it makes for an interesting term to include in prompts and produces some really colorful and I think interesting images. I especially like the ones of the apartment buildings and the diversity of the summer festival images. The Adventure Cat results are interesting and all of them lean towards illustration and digital art styles. He might be angry in a heavy metal band, glow in the dark, or about to jump out of an airplane. Forgotten Realm puts us on a long corridor ranging from surreal to abstract. And the ghost drinking coffee isn't as colorful as the other results, but at least it's a ghost this time. Daguerreotype. Say that three times fast. The daguerreotype was the first publicly available photographic process. It was introduced in 1839 and involved a number of dangerous chemicals. Using daguerreotype in your prompt will give you this classic muted old timey aesthetic with primarily black and white or brown tinted images. Vignettes and rough borders are also common. This is a great example of how a style word such as daguerreotype can affect the subject matter or the semantic aspects of the image. 
Most daguerreotypes in the real world are old images from the 1800s that contain specific fashion, like these poofy dresses, and older building architecture, like we see in these apartment buildings. So when we prompt for daguerreotype, we're more likely to get those older clothing and building styles. Mr. Adventure Cat is now a very esteemed individual posing for his portrait. Forgotten Realm brings in trees and leaves for most of the results, along with a mysterious figure in a cloak. We're able to get someone drinking coffee in the last set of images, but not always a ghost. Ultraviolet fluorescence photography uses UV light to capture images. This can reveal details that are not visible to the human eye, such as markings on plants that attract insects. By including ultraviolet fluorescence photo in your prompt, you'll get images with a heavy violet hue and bright fluorescent colors that make it look like the images were taken under a black light. I really like some of the glow in the dark effect that it has on the summer festival prompt. Similar to what happened with the photogram style, our adventure cat is not anthropomorphic, so that might take a little bit more work. The Forgotten Realm images have a nice infrared quality to them, and the ghosts are looking purple and spooky with their coffee. This is a pretty potent style. For a more subtle but still very purple effect, you can remove the word fluorescence from the prompt and just use ultraviolet photo. Vintage color film refers to older film stocks used for color photography. These films have distinct characteristics and colors that evoke a nostalgic and retro feel. The effect of vintage color film is similar to using 35 millimeter color film in your prompt, but the colors are a bit more muted and it seems like it leans more into the cyan orange color palette. You can definitely see how the word vintage also affects the semantics of the images here with the vintage fashion and that car in the upper right apartment building image. The color space is really sticking close to those cyans and oranges in these three examples. Our adventure cat is out there living his dreams and we got ghosts drinking coffee this time which we didn't get when using 35 millimeter color film as the style. Lomography is a type of photography that embraces imperfections. Lomography images are often taken with plastic toy cameras that have unique and unpredictable lens optics. The resulting images have kind of a spontaneous experimental and retro feel with flaws that become artistic features. You can see the light leaks and lens flares in these images. Some look a little bit out of focus or as if they were accidental shots like the apartment building in the lower left. There's some nice retro color palettes in these images. We got a boss cat and a hoodie this time. That's probably my favorite cat so far. The Forgotten Realm is appropriately overgrown. And I like the faded and slightly blurry look of the top two ghost photos. If you like really tiny things, you might enjoy this next one. A tilt shift lens allows photographers to control the plane of focus by tilting or shifting the lens elements. This results in unique images that look like miniature scenes or have very selective focus. This effect is going to work best for prompts with cities or nature landscapes. In our street style results, the miniature effect only came through on the lower left image, but the other three do have significantly blurred backgrounds. For the apartment building and the summer festival results, you can see that miniature effect on all of the images. And it worked pretty well on the other three prompts too. The cat looks miniature in three out of the four. We have miniature looking forgotten realms and some super cute miniature ghost drinking coffee. Long exposure light painting involves leaving the camera shutter open for several seconds and sometimes minutes. During this time, the photographer uses light sources such as flashlights or LEDs to paint or draw in the frame. The result is abstract luminous trails and shapes. You'll notice that it's nighttime in all of these images because long exposure light painting is typically done in the dark or at night. It's a nice effect that adds a sense of motion to the results. Our cat just wants to be a normal cat this time, except for in the lower left where we don't get a cat at all. There are some nice ethereal looking light trails in our forgotten realm and our ghosts look like they're made up of smoky, glowing light trails. Kodak Panatomic X was a black and white film known for its fine grain and high resolution. It was popular in the mid 20th century and favored by photographers for its versatility and sharpness. I think the results are aesthetically pleasing and it's interesting that there's a bit of a double exposure effect going on for a few of the summer festival results. Although Kodak Panatomic X is a black and white film, Midjourney won't always give you black and white images. It doesn't do too bad here, but if you want to force the results to be black and white, just add black and white film to the prompt. With our other three subjects, we get about 50-50 black and white versus color images here. I really like the aesthetics of these images, especially our adventure cat and the ghost drinking coffee. Those are the 10 styles that I wanted to share today. I hope seeing these examples inspires you to try some new prompts. 
Let me know in the comments if you try any of these styles or have specific styles that you'd like me to include in a future video. And before you go, please make sure you click the like button, subscribe, all the things. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.